stars, according to the UK's Mirror, inside Kate Middleton's cancer recovery, poignant update on treatment plan and rough moments following Kate's glowing video address to Team Great Britain. The Mirror takes a look at the princess's cancer treatment plan. Eight months on, from progress updates to her return to work timeline. Royal watchers were delighted to see Princess Kate looking happy and glowing in a recent video message alongside Snoop Dogg. The message was for Team Great Britain and their intense competition during the Olympics in France. However, it's unlikely her schedule will return to normal anytime soon, according to sources. In the clip, Kate and her husband, for now, Prince William, were all smiles as they praised this year's batch of Olympians, who they hailed as an inspiration. This marks the fourth time the mother of three has made a public appearance this year, either in person or via suspicious video, having taken a step back from royal duties to focus on her health. In March, the princess announced that she was undergoing preventative chemotherapy treatment for an undisclosed form of cancer, reassuring members of the public that she was making good progress and was going to be okay. Kate's brave public address made amid wild conspiracy theories concerning her absence from official duties led to an outpouring of affection, and many have anxiously followed Kate's progress in the months since. Now in her fifth month of recovery, fans have been delighted to see Kate, 42, make a number of appearances over the summer. Not more than four, though. Sparking speculation that she may soon be returning to work. Uh Uh-uh. However, for now, Kate's focus is very much on her recovery, and it could take some time for normality at the palace to ensue. The palace, as in Kensington Palace, apartment one, where Prince William lives, or Adelaide Cottage at the Windsor Estate, where Kate and the kids live. Which one is it? Before attending the Trooping the Color back in June, Kate confirmed she was not out of the woods yet, revealing that she was experiencing good days and bad days in a rare candid admission kate told supporters i am making good progress but as anyone going through chemotherapy will know there are good days and bad days the princess said on those bad days you feel weak tired and you have to give in to your body resting but on the good days when you feel stronger you want to make the most out of feeling well especially when there's high-end events like Wimbledon or Tripping the Color. I can get my fashion on and just look fabulous and tan. I mean, my treatment is ongoing and will be for a few more months or even years. On the days I feel well enough, it is a joy to engage with school life, spend personal time on the things that give me energy and positivity, I absolutely love hopping on one of our two million dollar helicopters and jaunting right down there to the Sandringham Estate and then right over to the Royal Air Force base at Northolt to fly to any number of different foreign locations, islands like, oh, my favorite you know, mystique, but there's the Maldives and, of course, St. Bart's. I mean, my treatment is ongoing and will be for a few more months. And I love to spend personal time on the things that give me energy and positivity as well as to do a little work from home. I turn my computer on and I look at emails. Yes, that's me working. She continued, I'm looking forward to attending the King's Birthday Parade this weekend with my family and hope to join a few public engagements over the summer. 
but equally knowing I am not out of the woods yet, I am learning how to be patient, especially with uncertainty, taking each day as it comes, listening to my body, resting, not working, and equally knowing I am not out of the woods yet, allowing myself to take this much needed time to heal, even more vacation than I have in the past 13 years of my marriage where we were able to take 6 to 12 foreign vacations per year. Now things have changed and, well, the number of vacations mm, may be slightly reduced, but, you know, a good old staycation is just as good. Thank you so much for your continued understanding and and to all of you who have so bravely shared your stories with me. The princess looked radiant in white as she joined her family on the Buckingham Palace balcony for the Trooping of the Color in an outfit reminiscent of Princess Meghan Markle's first trip to Royal Ascot. A similar white and black jaunty hat tipped to the side and a white frock accented Kate's very fit and healthy looking strides as she stepped from carriage to palace up to the balcony standing near Prince William and three of her children looking strong and happy. Many were relieved to see her signature sparkling smile once more. In July, Kate attended Wimbledon with daughter Princess Charlotte and sister Pippa Middleton, where she received an emotional standing ovation. Why did they choose to leave the other two children out of Wimbledon? I can't understand how Prince William can take one child and not the other children to see soccer. And then how Kate takes one child and not the other children to see men's tennis. It was men's tennis. It wasn't women's tennis. It's never women's sports. Not for Prince William and not for Kate Middleton. Why would you leave any of the kids out of it? And that goes for Pippa too. Pippa's got two or three children. One of them named Rose, just like Rose Hanbury. Those children didn't want to come to see the tennis? Curious. It's got to be distressing for the kids to be singled out one from the rest, in my humble opinion. Feel free to disagree with me. While such appearances are certainly positive to see, Kensington Palace has confirmed that Kate won't be returning to her usual duties until her medical team advises her to do so. And some articles have estimated that that might not happen for the rest of the year, if not for five years. Back in June, a palace spokesperson said, We have been really clear that Kate needs the space and the privacy to recover right now. She will return to work when she has had the green light from doctors, doctors who remain unseen and unnamed and certainly cannot come out and say precisely what cancer has been the diagnosis and what this preventative chemotherapy is as opposed to adjuvant chemotherapy one of them being fictional and the other one being a real thing but we don't want to comment with any specifics because you know privacy but if we can use it as a lever to make you people back off and stop asking questions because you feel overwhelmed by sympathy for the story that we're telling you well then that is exactly the math that we are calculating and we are counting on it, yes. Now, following her most recent video appearance, a source has firmly reiterated that the princess is not at that stage yet, as many speculate over her timeline to recovery. The source quoted as a royal insider, again, unnamed, anonymous, maybe not even real, told the Mail Online, We are not there yet! When we last heard from her ahead of Trooping the Color, she said her treatment was going on into the summer. And that's what's happening indefinitely. It's been a rough, rough time 
a really difficult year for the entire family, and, as she herself said, she is not out of the woods yet. The direction is positive, but there will not be great change in terms of her public profile after Sunday night, and no one is giving a time scale for her return. Ever! The publication's royal editor, Rebecca English, oh, that suspicious pillow tied around the middle, also states that Kate has been continuing her preventative chemotherapy treatment this summer, but she claims that even when this ends, her recovery period will last for many months. It's likely the princess will continue to attend keynote national events, events of a certain caliber, with celebrity guests, that sort of thing. Not the -the run-of-the-mill library, senior center, food kitchen, charity shop. No, mm -mm. only the keynote national events, including Remembrance Sunday, however, according to the report. Now, it's funny how there's good days and bad days, but the good days always fall on the days when there's big-ticket, celebrity-studded events. Never on the days where, you know, those good days never fall on, you know, the sort of -of run-of-the-mill working royal duties of the sort, say, Queen Consort Camilla and Princess Royal Anne do, right? The, The sort of obscure kitchen, obscure non-profit. No, it's never those events. Cherry-picking only the most flashy designer outfit you know definitely not something involving dirt or poor people or children and again curious silence about the race riots happening across the UK how can it be this article was just published with the extended royal family now largely enjoying their annual holiday In Balmoral, Scotland, we likely won't see many public appearances until some point in September. As per the Mail Online, the Wales family are currently having a fabulous summer at Anmer Hall, their Norfolk home, and hope to join the King in Scotland at the end of the month. Are the Waleses really at Anmer Hall? right across the road from Rose Hanbury, or again, did they do what they usually do? Fly the royal helicopters at a cost of two million pounds. Fly them down to Sandringham and then hike it over to the Royal Air Force Base at North Holt and go abroad, right? Are they in the Maldives? Are they in Greece? Are they in St. Bart's? Is that why... The Olympic video was so clumsily green screened so you couldn't see where they were. Right? They just mapped some odd looking kind of wall covered in ivy and plants and whatnot. It didn't match the light on their faces and, in fact, created this odd halo, especially around William's bald head. It was clearly not shot against that background to hide what where are they if they're not in scotland by now where are they are they on holiday in saint bart's with pippa and the giraffe her wallet i mean husband and that father-in-law of hers who is under investigation for essaying a 16 year old is that what's up they don't want us to see William will be resuming his duties once Prince George, Princess Charlotte, and Prince Louis return to school. And while Kate will remain the priority, it's understood he'll be taking on a fairly full workload once more this autumn. Yeah, we'll see. Although it's unlikely Kate will be returning to work anytime soon, it's likely the princess will continue to attend keynote national events, including Remembrance Sunday. Right, they're punching this again, letting us know. Don't expect to see her at no lowbrow, poor people, regular middle class events. No, only the big ticket keynote national events. 
Was this something that those six to eight months of negotiation arrived at? Right? She's off duty. So malingering, unless it's something where Tom Cruise or the Beckhams might show up. Famous tennis stars and the rapper Snoop Dogg. A source has also debunked rumors that the princess won't be returning to work in the same capacity again, declaring she's coming back 100%. Speaking with The Sun, Vanity Fair's royal correspondent Katie Nichol revealed, I really think this is not the case. Everything I hear is that she will be back to work. She's coming back 100% to pick up as Princess of Wales and do the great work she was doing before. Two months out of the year, that is. It will just be in her time, and she's ready and crucially when she gets the sign-off from her medical team. This unnamed, anonymous, fictional medical team. Who are they? They don't step forward and give any kind of diagnosis and treatment information, no? That's not something that happens. So weak and malingering, can't work. We know Queen Elizabeth had cancer and worked until two days before she passed away. And this girl can't get on a Zoom call. She can't show up unless, you know, champion tennis players or King Charles are there. If it's not that, she's not showing up. Is she even in the country when we don't see her? Or is she overseas with Pippa? Right? In any number of, what was the number? $27,000 a week. That's the, that's been the price of one of the resorts that Kate Middleton stayed at in Mustique, which was their habitual getaway. What other getaways? Is it Prince Charles, is it King Charles's house in Romania? So many places around the globe to visit. Notice, not official visits like Prince Harry and Princess Meghan are doing in Colombia. Just visit, vacation, rest. Many people have asked the question, how tan are Kate and William in this period when she is supposed to be suffering with cancer and some sort of cancer treatment. It's usually recommended that you don't get in crowded airplanes. You don't hang around with big crowds of people. You don't suntan. You don't sunless tan. It's too risky. But unless my eyeballs deceive me, I'm seeing big crowd at the tennis event. Big crowds and certainly a lot of different family members and staff at Trooping the Color same deal for Remembrance Day. So what's up with the health restrictions? And can you really get on an airplane and be here and there and everywhere that you don't want us to see? Right? Like, w what's going on? Are the pair of them vacationing together for the sake of the children? Are they actually ever going to end up at Balmoral, right? That was the whole, we saw a whole spate of articles saying, oh, Scotland, Balmoral, they're going to have a summit about the Sussexes. Well, this would be prime time to do that because Prince Harry and Princess Meghan are doing the damn thing in Colombia, as we saw today, and we're going to see it for the next few days. The fashion, the philanthropy, the public speeches, the glorious diplomacy as international dignitaries. We ain't seeing none of that from Prince William and Kate Middleton. We're seeing very little. And all we see are the kids being trotted out as props to this event, that event, and that's supposed to make everyone satisfied when there are not only endless numbers of UK residents that need help and support and charities that need the same but internationally in the British Commonwealth it would be constructive 
for somebody from the royal family to show their faces, but we ain't getting none of that, right? For all the investment of millions of pounds from the UK taxpayer, ka there's very little return on that investment. Illness is one thing. We don't see King Charles in a mask. We don't see him shying away from crowds. We don't see Kate Middleton in a mask. We don't see much of Kate Middleton at all, unless it's big ticket, big celebrity, cameras rolling. That's all we going to see from her. From for the foreseeable future and maybe for the next five years or more, will Kate Middleton make it to the throne? Or are we seeing some kind of transition period happen? It's very hard to say. On to the comments. 190957 says, It must be hard for her with Willie going out grafting every day. Hmm. Brett Sinclair says, Where's Kate? Ren makes music comments, The Daily Kathy Fluff piece, which coincidentally always comes a day after 30 articles appeared attacking Meg, attacking Harry, and attacking Harry and Meg together. Next time a load of articles about... Around 20 plus arrive in 24 hours on here attacking Harry and Meg. You will. Now I have highlighted this. See fluff pieces about St. Kathy who walks on water the very next day. Bouncy Ben adds, I had cancer and had to have a total hysterectomy. I was in hospital for one night and came out the next day. Also had preventative treatment after the same As Kate, the only difference is I am a carer for my husband, so had to just get on with it. I was in my early 70s, not a spring chicken, and didn't have any help. Any rough times, you get over them. Ren makes music, (laughs) comments. They will be bringing this up for the next 40 years. How she got it, how she fought, how she helped millions of other women by having it her braveness while getting treatment how she helped charles as they went through it together this will always be brought up until the day she passes renta adds millions of sufferers have rough moments and don't get the help she does money dog comments try living in the real world when you are really unwell after having chemotherapy, not having to do things for yourself, as all done for you. So no, I don't feel sorry for her. Do you think she cares about us? No would be the answer to that question. Seabon says, I hope she's really doing well and that she can beat this. I start my radiotherapy today. Linnea Lena 64 adds, she looks much better, but that doesn't mean she is 100% physically or mentally. She should take as long as she needs. Well then, 23 remarks, no one who goes through chemo looks as good as she does in her most recent pics. Anyone who has gone through it themselves or who has known someone who has gone through it knows what chemo does to your body. And there you have it. Comments. Comments section is on fire. Another person comments. So there will be no end to rough treatment. But sun tanning. Wearing sunless tanner, large-scale public events, these are not recommended for cancer treatment recipients. Brown Box says, return to work? This grifter has not worked for years. Fluffy adds, even if Kate really was doing preventative chemo, It would only take three to six months. They said she started in late February. It's now mid-August. That's six months. So if she was actually doing that, so if she actually was doing that, then she'd be done and she would be going 
back to regular work at least by by at least October. But nope, she's not because she doesn't have cancer and she's not doing preventative chemo. Banana comments, my daughter-in-law is in preventative chemo for Hodgkin's five weeks of radiation and then six months of brentuximab. Kate is not doing this. Unicorn comments, of course she's not. Obviously she's not. Pina comments, I have to agree. A big sad lie for cover and sympathy. Blue one comments, they are phasing her out. She has no interest in doing the job, never did, and even less interest in spending even one extra second with William. And crucially, Charles and Camilla are on board with her scaling back because it will ultimately lead to more spotlight for them. No more Kate stealing front pages from Charles at the Chelsea Flower Show or her outfits preempting coverage of Charles's pet causes. Frankly, it would be better for the monarchy if she stayed visible. She's the most popular member, after all. But Charles and Camilla care far more about their own reputations than they do the monarchy. So if Kate wants to scale back, they're not going to stop her. Charitably, one could say that the pressure to be perfect had taken her mental health to the breaking point, just as it did her mother-in-law and sister-in-law Princess Meghan Markle. Uncharitably, one could say she's simply lazy. Purple Circle adds, The irony is they told H&M you can't be half in and half out, but that's exactly what they're doing themselves. Agree with your sentiments, though. I don't think it's that Kate is particularly popular. Her disappearance generated more interest than her appearances ever did, even at Wimbledon. The ratings spoke for themselves. In a fairly dull family, it doesn't take much to stand out. That's why they couldn't cope with Diana's star power. Blue Circle retorts, she's definitely the most popular among the British public in most polls. Even most people that dislike her tend to think even less of her in-laws and husband. Perhaps it's not a coincidence that she's also the only one who married into the family and easily the least inbred, I mean, most photogenic. But yeah, there is an irony to it. Different players, though, and some lessons learned. The Queen, Charles, and William, and their respective staffs did not want Harry to leave because they recognized H&M's value as scapegoats and or symbols of a relatable monarchy. And they recognized the PR danger of H&M being out of their direct control. It backfired badly. With Kate, things are structurally different. Kate can't escape, and Kate will play by the rules. She won't be out like Harry or Diana or Princess Meghan, writing controversial memoirs or swanning around on private jets and yachts. Kate explicitly won't be keeping busy doing her own charity work like Prince Harry and Princess Meghan are doing. She'll be locked into an arrangement where she can live her own life in private, enjoy continued access to her children, remain in homes she's spent much of the marriage in, make appearances at specified big events only, and otherwise do what she wants in exchange for never doing anything too controversial and being generously funded by the royal family in perpetuity either generously funded or barely funded. I don't think Adelaide Cottage is a particularly generous accommodation, and there have been rumors that part of trying to evict Prince Andrew, who retains all of his expensive security, his big titles, and his properties, and no one is trying to deprive him of them, that trying to Evict him from Royal Lodge is about handing that property over to Kate. We'll see when that happens, because it's not like Prince Andrew is excluded from Balmoral, Christmas, Sandringham, any of it. And as much as there's lip service about, what a bad guy, oh, he's in so much trouble materially, Ain't nothing different about his lifestyle. 
his servants, or his access to all those resources he was able to collect in his jaunts overseas to that special island, in my humble opinion. (laughs) And while we're watching poor Kate deciding which striped sweater to wear for her latest video appearances, right? There must be a whole closet of them building up the strength for her next outfit strut at a public event. We are having to console ourselves with the ideas that preventative chemo might not leave you feeling sick and tired because it's not exactly the same thing as an actual cancer diagnosis. Preventative chemotherapy is a far cry from an actual specific cancer diagnosis and receiving adjuvant chemotherapy, right? It's very odd and irresponsible that the royal family and their press teams have not bothered to correct what may have been spoken either in error with a lack of specificity, but, you know, people who have actually gone through preventative chemotherapy or adjuvant chemotherapy, they were not well and hopping around during it. It isn't nothing. It's not a trip to the spa. And people whose cancer is early stage enough for chemo to be considered preventative are not generally laid up for two months before diagnosis. There are people with like stage two and three walking around without even knowing anything is wrong. Also, people whose cancer is early stage enough for chemo to be considered preventative are not generally laid up for two months post-op before diagnosis. There are people with like stage two and three walking around, not even knowing anything is wrong. And again, it's the community of people who have cancer who are saying that if there was an actual cancer diagnosis, it would be the doctor's orders to avoid sun, sunless tanning, big crowds, travel, with groups of people and large numbers of staff. And none of that is what we're seeing. So this is the latest update about Kate Middleton. Please let me know what you think, stars.